this week on Superbike Family. Let's go racing then at Road America and away they go. After several months away, it's time to get back to the business of Pegram Racing. Larry looks like he's got a good run right here. Larry tries his hand at drag racing with mixed results. I knew I could win the slow race because I'm a slow. <laughs> and how will Larry and company fare at their home track of Mid-Ohio? Off the track. Luckily, he's OK, though. That's me, Superbike racer, Larry Paper. And I used to think that my life on the track's pretty fast. That was, of course, until all my girls came along with the support of my loving parents, plus a hand-selected crew keeps it fun, but is willing to do whatever it takes to win. Together, we are the Superbike family. It's been two and a half months since Larry Pegram has raced his Superbike on the AMA Pro Circuit. He picked up two third place finishes at Daytona on his new Yamaha R1 in March and has spent the downtime with his family. Now it's time to go back to the racetrack. Next round, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, where he won in 2009 against Matt Mullatton. 2009, probably for me, it was probably one of the best races of my life. I, I was racing with one of the biggest jerks I've ever known, Matt Mladen. But up front, it is Pegram now into the lead, gone right back around Mladen. Man, you blink your eye, and that Ducati <laughs> just comes blowing by the Suzuki on that front straightaway, no problem. Towards the end of the race that we passed, there was one lap we passed each other seven times. He's got that Ducati cooking, and he brings home his first Superbike win in over 10 years. To win that race, the first race I'd won in 10 years, and to beat him heads up in a battle like that was just, it was pretty much the highlight of my career. Unbelievable run, and look at the celebration. He is beside himself. I'd imagine his crew is too. He was King Kong, but his team behind him was, you know, the Penske's of, of motorcycle racing, and we were just this little tiny team, you know, with the, uh, with an old slow rider. Larry rode the race of his life right there to beat Matt Maladin like you heard the man say, unbelievable. It's not your typical weather for the first of June in Wisconsin. Cold temperatures mean cold tires and slower times. You know, this microphone was down here, you could hear my knees rattling. However, the crew is optimistic as Larry is fast in practice. <laughs> Get a piece of cardboard or something to make him up a practice trophy. Let's go play some practice. The girls have come along for the trip as well. Riley is now eight and is Larry's mom's sous chef. Riley, how are you doing with your strawberries? Good. Good? Are you about got them finished? Yeah. You do? Okay. All righty. Have you got your veggies all done? Do? Okay. Look, it's heart shaped. She made that for you. She made out of heart. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can eat it. It's not. How hard. is it? Is it good? You got your winter coat on. You think it's cold out? It's freezing, isn't it? Look, you got you guys got your UGG boots on. <laughs> Sophie's still in her jammies. Ah, oh, Riley's still in the strawberries. <laughs> Hey, you're supposed to be cooking, not <laughs> Let's go racing then at Road America, and away they go. Here's that battle for third. Roger Hayden now. Pegram's caught up again. Closing stages. Two to go. Can Larry do something here? Certainly there's enough time, and he's certainly got a close enough sight of him right now to go for it. As much fun as the kids have at Elkhart Lake, the team ends up with a disappointing weekend. Dave, I'm sorry, what was the problem do you think here today? I haven't the faintest idea. I won't know until after the race when I can download the rider and the bike and get some idea as to what's going on. There you have it, number 72. Larry Pegram wanted a podium here today. Just not gonna happen. We gotta go back to the drawing board a little bit for tomorrow, find a little bit more speed, but um, my foremost crew did a good job. We had a lot, of, a lot of mishaps, just little gremlins this weekend and qualifying and stuff, so. 
put me on the second row and I didn't get the greatest of starts from there. Let those guys get away a little bit. But I thought we were good enough to be third today. Didn't, so I'm pretty disappointed, but we'll come back tomorrow. The team makes adjustments to the bike for the second race of the weekend. But Larry goes backwards. Larry had some issues leading out. He's not going to be happy with this run, obviously. He was up there battling for the third spot yesterday. You know, it was really disappointing for me at Elkhart, but uh, not a big deal. You shake it off. I got mid-Ohio coming up, you know, just uh, family, friends, everybody I know in the whole world going to be there. So, you know, no pressure. <laughs> to let off some of that pressure, Larry decides to have a little fun in the dirt. Today we're heading out really about five minutes from my house over to National Trail Drag Strip and over in the parking lot on the side of the drag strip and we're going to do some dirt drags. Been doing this since 1947, 48. How many years you been doing this? About 50. 50 years. Or more. I'm 90 years old. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. All right. And it's kind of a whole weekend deal where everybody comes and camps and they have a big party and then on Sundays the dirt drags. So there's a, a list of characters that show up out there that are that are just some of them are really comical. Everybody's really animated and it's just a good time. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. That is called spice a lot. Yamaha, my boys at Yamaha did me a big favor. They gave me a brand new YZF 450 2014 model and the thing is awesome. Put factory tune Vagram Racing uh, lowering kit on it, as you can see here. Factory tune, duct tape. This thing is uh, this is professional dirt drag racing foremost endurance Yamaha 450, brand new, 2014. Hopefully this thing this this scares them. See, they they see this brand new, they're scared, they're scared right now. You gonna get it in today? At the dirt drags, they have several different events. They have regular just line up and drag race another guy. They have the slow race, which I'm unfortunately good at. In the slow race, I dominate. Uh, it was me and my buddy Joe, uh, and I was like, he was just ahead of me, and I, and I was getting, I was, it's hard, because you don't, if you fall over, touch your feet, you're done. We got a winner, we got a winner. Can't put them feet down. Number one, right there, number one, number one. What's cool about these events is you get to go to it, and it's totally no pressure, it's totally fun, but it's still racing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still competition. It's just a different form of racing, and it's neat to go on a different, deal and still see at the end of the day it's all about racing. We take them first and second place out of each heat then out of those two heats the two finalists the four finalists will run for the money in each class. This is exciting. All right here we go with some action y'all. Boy I don't know who that boy is out there on that orange bike with that smoking machine but y'all better watch him. All right he got him lined up trying to get that young man started. If he don't get started he'll push him off the line. There he go. Flag is good. It's a good race. It's a good race. Joey Marosco comes in second. And I think the young man in the blue and white, he looks like he first, but the judges are going to get, get together and confer. Y'all get ready for more round action. And this 63rd and running, there's the winner right here. That's a bad man. Right, that's Larry, baby. That's Larry. You know, he know how to do it. He can do it on the dirt till it hurts. Coming up, Larry goes house hunting. I think instead of fixing this up and renting it, we could flip this thing. And Team Foremost travels to Barber Motorsports Park, looking to get the Superbike season back on track. A career as a professional motorcycle racer has its ups and downs. For the independent team owner Larry Pegram, it has been a 25-year roller coaster ride. He's enjoyed the benefit of a factory ride, but since 2004, he's owned his own team. Since getting married and having children, the financial rewards of racing do not pay all the family bills. For the past several years, he's bought rundown homes and renovated them into rental properties. While the work is not as glamorous as racing, it will set the family up for their future.
All right, hopefully this one's nice. Ugh, dog smell. That's strong. <laughs> Good price though. Yeah. Four bedrooms, two baths, Licking Valley, foreclosure. Nice American flag painted on the wall. True American deal. What can we flip this thing for, you think? This uh, motorcycle racing thing has been working out for a lot of years. I've made a good living at it. I've had to diversify and build my own team to be able to make a living at it and do stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, times are times are hard. So I've, you know, I started buying rental properties and 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 taking care of them. And that's been a big, big uh, part of uh, adding more stuff to what I do. Yeah, I'd like to see some new flooring in here, some new paint, cabinets, appliances. Actually, the cabinets look pretty good. Yeah. All right, what do you think? I think instead of fixing this up and renting it, we could flip this thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in this area, four beds, two baths, we're going to be uh, probably in that 120 to 130 price range. Yeah, so if we can get this thing right, instead of renting it, we'll just flip it. Yeah. With the rental house bought, it's time to head out to race for the third of seven rounds on the AMA Pro Superbike Tour. The weekend turns out to be a frustrating one. He gets penalized for jumping the start in race one. Here's another battle. Larry Pegram in seventh place. He was also uh, given that five second penalty. Larry finishes sixth overall. Larry Pegram's going to hold on on the Yamaha. Race two is another disappointment. He finishes mid-pack again. Pegram then's going to hold on. Eslix looks over his shoulder, and he can't get any further, and he's got a problem, it looks like, as they cross the line. It's like when you do something, and it's not right, and you wish you could start the whole day over. That's what we needed to do. We needed to start the whole day over. Because once you get upset with one thing, then something else, then something else, it just keeps it like a domino effect. After their success at Daytona, the team has been unable to finish any higher than fourth place in the last four races. Larry heads home and hides his frustration from his girls. Racing isn't as important right now as spending time with Riley and Sophie, which takes priority. Girls, homework time. Playtime's over till we get our homework done. Come on. All right. And you know what everybody's homework is. Your homework tonight is? On the start of the week, and I need to trace me on this, and then I need to get little pictures of me and my, and my friends, the dog, the hamster, and a printed piece of paper of my fa favorite movie, and that's all. That's all? What are we supposed to do, draw you on this? Your whole body. So what, I'd put laid down, i trace you? All right, hey, what's your homework? Draw letters. Draw letters? Do I have to draw them, then you want to draw them right beside it? You just got to make your own letters. Okay. All right, what do you want to do first? Letters or we want to trace you? Letters. All right, we'll do letters. I. L, and then do L. 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 E. Hmm? Let me see. Use a different crown. Use a sharper crown. Here, use a green one. I like that one. That was good. That's Riley. Good job. We're going to write hex bugs, okay? H E X space so underneath of it B U G All right, let's do it. Roll it out. Tuck your shirt in here. Don't move. Well, you can't laugh. Yeah, tickle around your foot. <laughs> you kind of run off the edge of it. Got that race where I messed up. Okay, all right, we're done. Get up. Roll off. Don't rip it. Don't rip it. Don't rip it. Well, could you please try to stay on the lines? Well, the line's a little bit crooked. That's why I'm making it straight. Thank you for being so judgmental. Okay, let's roll it up. 
Rolling up Riley's head. Coming up, the team heads to Mid-Ohio with hopes of reversing their on-track fortunes. And Heather Pegram re-enters the job market. This track can be tough to try to find good spots to pass on, so this start is going to be hugely important for anybody who wants a shot at Pegram today. Pegram! Can anybody get him by the first corner? Awesome. Look at that move. Very aggressive move by Blake right there. He had to make that happen. He can't let Pegram get that, get that clear track out in front of him. Here comes Pegram. Looking inside. You can see the power of that foremost Ducati as they shoot up over the top. Oh, right there he there. goes. Blake overcooked it a little bit and got up in the door for Larry. Here he comes. There Hayden he going inside. Nice move by Tommy Hayden. Hey, that'll give him the lead. Now, can he hold him off? Oh, Pegram forces it back. Tommy, one more time, looking inside. Larry Pegram is going to sweep the weekend in Heartland Park. Clean sweep. He wins the pole, leads most laps, and wins both races here in Topeka, Kansas. Round four of the AMA Pro Road Racing Series finds Larry and company at his home track, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. In front of family, friends, and sponsors, Larry hopes to get the season back on track. You know, this is my home track. Um, Mid-Ohio is, is a place that I love to race at, so my hopes this weekend are, are the sky's the limit. I mean, I want to go in there and win the race. Out go the lights, away we go, down towards that first corner. In race one, Larry finishes ninth, another middle of the pack finish. And in race two, things go from bad to worse. I mean, it, mid, mid Ohio just ended up being just terrible for me. I don't know, I fell off on the warm up lap and the oil that they didn't clean up. The number 72, Larry Pegram, went down in turn nine on the warm up lap. They've got it cleaned up in turn nine now. They're ready to go racing. But Larry did have to come back to the pits, put it back together, but he's ready to go racing as well. It was just a spiral out of control, but it, honestly, I rode like a complete idiot. I, I couldn't get comfortable all weekend. I really don't know what was going on. The number 72, Larry Pegram, had a bit of an incident just before the start of the race. Looks like you guys got it put all back together and out, out in time for the start. Just in time. Uh, that was kind of rough, you know, because we didn't know if he was going to be able to come back to the grid or if he had to come back here, and it's quite a ways to get from here to there. And, uh, you know, we were able to hustle and get him back out there, so hopefully everything stays cool. He just went off the track, apparently, just at, just hit the tire wall, so we'll have to see. He has a bit of an issue. Well, there you go. Yeah, let's take a little look. He got it all backed in in there, and he just kind of ran out of room. He outbroke himself, basically, and that means he got in there past his brake mark and ended up deep in the corner. And, and, and in that case, you either turn the bike, crash it, or decide to ride off. And luckily, the track has been changed over the years and gave him enough runoff to where he could kind of get out of that without getting hurt. This, of course, is home race, so he desperately wants to at least finish race two. The whole weekend was, it was when you get out of bed and stub your toe, and then you're late for work, and then your car breaks down, and then, I mean, it just rolls out of control, and that's what it was. Larry finishes next to last. While Larry struggles with his career, his wife Heather hopes to restart hers. Well, for years when I was dating Larry, I was working and modeling and doing a lot of catalog work. So as a, when you do model, you have to test and shoot and keep your looks current with all these, with all the, they have websites now with modeling agencies, so you have to have all these current shots. So um, I have worked a few times this year and I need to update. So I told Larry, I'm going to Miami to shoot with my dear friend, Scott Teitler. Keep it a little straighter. Good, good, good. Throw that off your shoulders again, because that really looks good. Lean a tiny bit at the waist. Yep, yep, yep. Who has I have shot with many times, and he was the one of the first photographers that I shot with when I started my career. So, um, yeah, I was just kind of wanting to find a way to get down to Miami and just sit on the beach, I think. 
excellent. You look amazing. Good. Me going to Miami means Larry is going to stay home and do everything I do and work, which is sad because yep. I feel bad he has to work and take care of the kids. Good. Next year, Sophie's going into kindergarten, so I plan on starting to go to castings again and get back to working. So it's going to be interesting to see Larry when I get bookings and leave town for a couple days because that'll probably start up again. So he's going to have to practice. Body's flawless. Looks great. I mean, honestly, Larry really, his main thing with me is he wants me to be here for the kids and not work to where I'm gone all the time or yeah. working too much. But I don't think Beautiful. that's the case. Good. I think that, um, you know, he, it's just, a, I think everyone needs to have their own, their own career and their own thing. It kind of makes you who you are. If you're not doing it, then you might not be happy. So I need a little bit of it in my life just to keep me traveling and doing different things. Good. Fun for me. <laughs> Six in the morning. No Heather. She's probably sleeping. I have to take care of the kids. Larry can do it with no problem. But if he can finagle himself into getting his mom to do it or getting me to help him or whatever or his sister, he's going to. When the kids were little and one of them would have to go, like if one of them dirtied their diaper, Larry would call his mom and say, how far away are you? Before, so he didn't have to change the diaper. <laughs> he can handle it. He can make sure they get up, make sure they go to school. Make sure. But if he can figure out some way to get somebody else to do it, just like when he was a kid, if I could, he could figure out something to get out of work, he can figure it out. He's gonna pawn the kids right on grandma and grandpa. I love it.